Thank you for tuning in to the Force Production Powerlifting Channel. My name is Lawrence Malchef, and thank you for tuning in, subscribing, hitting the notification bell. If you are one of those people, you're my favorite type of people. And one of my favorite things to do is to talk about the graph. So let's look at the graph of June. Graph of June. Here we go. Oh, this is a good one. This is a good one. <laughs> a lot of troops to be seen in this graph here. The truth is, I started at 286 pounds, went up to 290, then dropped to 270, right? For a uh, 20 pound loss. Well, actually, a 23 because I made it to 267, right? Made it to 267, but started adding on some water weight for whatever God knows reason. Um, not quite sure, but 12-day fast ended with me eating some good steak and vegetables and uh, a couple stuffed tomatoes with some bacons. Took me up to 290, and then um, from there, I jumped right back into a fast and plummeted to 268. And then I held there and dropped the pound, but then water. It was like this water weight gain thing. I'm not quite sure. But I found that bacon, ribeyes, and asparagus, and tomatoes, They do absolutely nothing to a state of ketosis. They keep you right in it. Because my keto, st my keto strips were red as hell. After, after eating all that food. So, what do I want to talk about outside of the graph? Because the graph is pretty self-explanatory. You do the snake diet by the, by the numbers, and you're, just, you're going to lose lots of fat. That's all there is to it. But... Um, I want to confess something about my about about this weight loss plateau. I didn't know how to deal with it, so you know what I did. Um, I ate. I had some carbs. I jumped out of ketosis for a second. I had some carbs and I felt like normal, right? <clears throat> but I felt normal all the way back up to 284 pounds. Did I put on um, 77? to 84 that I put on 17 pounds of fat no a bunch of water in that food it's a bunch of salt in that food I have no idea how many actual physical pounds of fat I put on because I didn't eat shit food steak vegetables right had some bread that's probably, uh, I had some tortillas, uh, I, had, uh, I had a couple of hamburgers, I had some, you know, some of the hamburger buns. So, I mean, I probably, yeah, I probably put on two, three pounds of actual fat because I overfilled my liver's glycogen capacity and then I started producing triglycerides. Okay, and the triglycerides got stored as body fat. But for the most part, as you can see, right here, put on a ton of weight, and then boom, you start fasting again, it drops right down. This is the, like a four day, this is like over four days. All that weight you drop down, right? Four days. What is that? What is this? Look at, look at this. That's one, two, three, four, five, six. Six days. And then one, two, three, four, five. So six days to spike me up. From 277 to 290, and then six days with even a one pound spike, then five days, I'm sorry, one, two, three, four, five, to lose, what is this, uh, 77, 87, so that's 10, 11, 12, 13 pounds, so five days to lose 13 pounds, right? And then from there, drop on, drop on down some more. So, you know, the, what I would like to do, and actually, I'm sorry, let me go right back to the graph. 
is I said to myself, well, damn, what kind of meal is going to be satisfying enough for me to not want to eat like a maniac and only put me on for like four or five pounds? And what I found was that was salmon. I had a real big fish meal with lots of vegetables. Five pound gain. Now I'm talking about I ate some fish, man. I ate a lot of fish. So that's what I've got to do from now on when I break it fast. It's got to be fish. It's got to be fish. You know, fish and vegetables. Seriously, that's that's got to be what it is. Because I didn't, I didn't, uh, I got mentally weak. You know, and I ate carbs, and 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 uh, and I ate, you know, a couple times a day, and I worked out, you know, trained like trained like a mother. You know, trained like crazy, man. But, I, you know, but mentally, I want to, you know, mentally I'm preparing. Well, actually, right now I'm doing my first dry fast. I'm going to be dry fasting until Monday. But, um, so, what have I learned? I've learned also that in 90 degree, 98 degree weather with 90% humidity, you cannot be working out at the age of 45 at 1 p.m. Or it's seven, eight at night because in Michigan, shit's fucking hot out there. So what I have to do is I have to hit it in the morning. No problem with no problem with that. I'll I'll leave the gym at, at I'll hit the gym six a.m. Leave at eight. And it'll be seventy-two degrees. Hell yeah, I'll do that all day. That's a small sacrifice. You just go to bed a little bit earlier, right? So you can get your sleep. You feel well rested. No caffeine, right? Nice deep uh, REM sleep. <sighs> Feeling like a million bucks going in there and getting shit done, right? That's the mission from now on. Work out early. Eat fish and vegetables. Have a little bacon with the fish. Okay? Leave it alone. And you got to tell yourself, hey, man, when the fucking eating's done, it's done. Right? That's the, that's the tough part of, about the snake diet. When you eat, you want to keep on eating. Right? Put yourself back in that mindset after your after food hits your food hits your face. It's fucking tough, man. But that's you know that's what builds the character on this. That's what builds character. Okay. And I want to talk for a second about character. Um, yeah, I may have made some mistakes, but guess what? I'm still plugging and chugging away, man. All right. I'm hitting this goal. Mid September. Mid-September, 210, 215 pounds, maybe even 205. You know why? You know how I'm going to do that? Because I'm going to use my positive circle of friends. My coach, uh, John Allen Reese, is helping me through my first dry fast. Cole is my coach. He sure as hell is not going to tell me anything sugar-coated. He's going to keep me on track. My desire to have success on this snake diet is going to keep me on track. I would now want to do better in July than I've done in June. I want to smoke June. And you know why? Let me tell you something. I, I started listening to the negative. And you see that body language where I put my, I naturally just put my hands over my, my mouth because I was ashamed. I was ashamed. Let me open, let me open my hands. Let me be open with you guys. Okay? I hit a weight loss plateau and I didn't know what to do. I had no idea what to do. I was stuck for a week. Cole told me I'd known a guy who's been stuck for three weeks. But did I, did I let those words register and say, okay, let me stick it out? No, I didn't. I was a little baby. And I wouldn't, I stuffed my face. I said, well, I need these carbs and I need this to reset my hormones and it, you start making excuses, right? Okay? Because it starts to get tough and you can't see your way through it. Okay? But here's, here's, here is the key. And this is the challenge that I'm currently in. Is that you have to separate the emotion from the thought. But it's very hard to do because they're, they're two sides of the same coin. Right? You have the thought. And then you have the emotion. Okay? 
And so on one side, you're always thinking, and then there's always an emotion with, with that comes with the thought. And, and how are you going to have success if you're, if you're allowing yourself, if you're allowing your ears to register negative thoughts from people? If you are allowing yourself to be in the company of people who are negative against what you're doing or who are negative towards what you're doing. How are you going to succeed? Like that. The world out there, this America we live in, it's, it's a gluttonous, uh, capitalistic society where that's where that's where our economy our economy is it's 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 a it's a it's a consumer driven economy so of course we're you know we're going to be inundated with food ads left and right i can't watch tv you guys i can't listen to regular radio because i don't want to hear 92 commercials for fucking food an hour i don't want to hear ads for liquor. I don't want to hear ads for medicines that are going to fuck you over after you've already fucked yourself over with the food that you've been eating. I don't want the lies. My dad's got stage four cancer and the, and the meds that they have him on, I saw the commercial for him the other day. These people are out riding fucking canoes and, and banging in the woods and all kinds of shit. My dad ain't riding no fucking canoe and fucking in the woods. My dad's in a fucking hospital bed right now. <clears throat> they don't show you that shit. And my dad's been fit his whole life. Incredibly fit. Never took a steroid in his whole life. Been a weightlifter his whole life. Been a runner his whole life. Been a health nut his whole life. Cancer still got him. Don't know what to say about that, except for this. You're going to snake that? You better surround yourself with positive people who, who are not going to let you down by telling you negative things. And if people, and if people are going to tell you negative things, if people are going to even one iota try to take you off of what you're trying to do, then they're not really your friends. And if you, can, and if you have the guts to tell them, say, hey, look, man, I really need you to be positive and support me with this. Or if you can't support me, just say that I can't support you and I'll see you a little bit later because that's what you do when you have, that's what you do when you have integrity for yourself. My friends aren't like that. All my friends support what I'm doing. All of them. None of them bother me with, with the social eating. They all know right now. I can't focus on that. The only thing I've been doing is getting in my own way, right? But I'm correcting it because. I'm still training and I've learned, got to eat fish, got to work out in the morning, got to hit this dry fast, switch things up and you can have a, a July that blows June away. So let's see if it can get done. And guys, I love you. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for hitting the notification bell. Thank you to the subscribers so far. And I will talk to you actually pretty soon because I've got some more stuff to upload, but I won't be able to upload that today because I've got uh, lots of stuff to do. Um, but I'll be uploading tomorrow and I love you guys. Thank you very much for the support and all the positive uh, feedback and the commentary and, and all the funny stuff that I read and um, all you trolls out there. Come at me. Come at me, bro. Anyway. Talk to you guys later. Bye.